First at four, were warning signs missed? New evidence revealed in the Oxford school shooting, and one victim's mother can't believe what she's seen. To me, this is beyond neglect. It's unforgivable. What depositions in a civil suit reveal, including the story behind this photo? And Kim is standing by with that first fall forecast. Well, and Karen, it sure does feel like fall out there with temperatures right now only in the upper 50s in Pontiac and Mount Clemens. Will we warm up for the weekend? I'll have the answers coming up in the forecast. Detroit is home to some of the best restaurants, and now one in particular has caught the recognition of the New York Times. I'll let you know which one it is coming up. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at 4, an attorney that's suing the Oxford School District over the deadly shooting at the high school is revealing some new evidence today. He says it's important for the public to hear this information right away, and the mother of one of the victims agrees. Better safe than sorry, because again, these school shootings keep happening again and again. Devin Skillian in the newsroom with more information about the months leading up to the shooting. Devin. Well, Karen, attorney Ven Johnson blasted the Oxford School District about not being more forthcoming about what may have gone wrong in the months and days leading up to the shooting. He says that leaves it up to him to reveal what he's learning in these sworn depositions he's been taking. Timeline he's been sketching out uh, starts with this photo drawn by the suspect in the case at the beginning of the school year in August of 2021. According to those depositions, the teacher received it, said she didn't see the drawing right away, but brought it up again the day before the shooting, testifying that she could see where a firearm had been erased from the picture. Johnson says he expects to learn more as he continues with future depositions, but he argues that drawing was the first sign of trouble more than three months before the shooting. He also described email exchanges between teachers and counselors in September and the day before the shooting that expressed concerns about the student. Johnson also says on November 10th, a teacher told a counselor that uh, Ethan Crumbly had been having a rough time. The counselor pulled Crumbly out of class to offer assistance, but the attorney says that wasn't enough. Imagine a 15-year-old kid, boy especially, in the hallway of his school being summoned out of class. Imagine that he didn't spill his guts about what was going on at home or causing him to have a rough time right now. No follow-up. Not like, hey, why don't you come on down to my office and we can talk about this. Another time, right now, what have you. Nothing with no follow-up. Of course, four students were killed during the shooting spree. Justin Schilling uh, was one of Schillings was one of them. His mother wants other districts, other teachers, and other parents to learn lessons from the timeline revealed today. We have four angels that are they're gone. You know, um, I can't find an excuse for dropping the ball again and again and again. We're learning all of these months later that this could have and should have been avoided. Back to Van Johnson, he says there are more depositions to come. We're waiting for a response now from the Oxford School District about these new revelations. Uh, but as you probably know, most organizations don't comment when there is pending litigation. So coming up new at five, we're going to take a closer look at some of the things teachers were apparently talking about the day just before the shooting. That's coming up at five o'clock. Karen, back to you. All right, we appreciate it. Thank you, Devin. Meantime, Ethan Crumbly, the teenager charged in the case, remains in the Oakland County Jail. There was another monthly hearing this morning to check on his status, and the judge confirmed Crumbly should be held as an adult. He's awaiting trial on several charges, including four counts of first-degree murder. Right now, the trial date is set for January 17th of next year. Well, students in the South Redford School District are getting back into their normal routines. Classes were back in session today after a cyber attack. We, those students returned for the first time in two days. The district closed Tuesday and Wednesday after the cyber attack was discovered. The district says its cyber forensics team was able to isolate the attack before the threat spread throughout the district. And it says there's no evidence to this point of a data breach. 
Nurses at the University of Michigan have reached a deal that could keep them off the picket lines. The union says it has a tentative agreement with the university. Nurses have been working under an expired contract, and that's been since June. Earlier this month, the union voted to allow its bargaining unit to call a strike. Members were frustrated over their workloads, the pay, and the parking. This new contract includes an end to mandatory overtime, competitive wages, and more union members still need to approve the new contract. We'll be following it. In today's first forecast, Kim Adams warned us it's going to be a big change. The first day of fall is here. She's standing by. Um, it feels pretty good, right, Kim? Uh, I mean, I like it. I know a lot of people don't, but we uh, we have temperatures right now in the upper 50s to low 60s. So to me, it's still tolerable. I mean, it's not winter time yet, and, but yet you can still enjoy the fall, which is my favorite season. And I know it is a lot of people out there as well. But we are setting the stage for one of the coldest nights we have seen in months. Right now, these temperatures in the low 60s is about a 25 degree change from this exact same time yesterday. So it was 25 degrees warmer yesterday at four o'clock at Metro Airport. It was 24 degrees warmer in Pontiac and Mount Clemens, also in Lapeer. This evening, those temperatures are going to plummet. We will have mostly clear skies and under those skies, everything just escapes into the atmosphere. By midnight, we're down to 50. 40s will be the overnight low and you can't rule out a few of the rural areas getting down into the 30s. Yes, Ooh. I, said, I said, oh my gosh, you did say 30. I, know, I had to say wow. it for the first time. Uh, we'll talk about it in the forecast in just a few minutes. All right, looking forward to it. Thanks, Kim. Former President Donald Trump fighting another legal setback. A U.S. Court of Appeals has allowed the Justice Department to resume using records seized from Trump's Florida estate. The court pointed out Trump hasn't provided any evidence he declassified any of the papers. Still, the president told Fox News he believes records can be declassified by any president if he just thinks about it. It's not clear if Trump's team will appeal. Yesterday, New York's attorney general sued Trump, his three eldest children, and his company for falsely inflating the worth of many of his key assets. Well, you probably heard Detroit is growing a great reputation for fine dining. And now a restaurant that opened less than a year ago is getting national attention from the New York Times. Kim DiGiulio introduces us to some hometown guys trying to share what they're cooking up with more people. We're in Detroit's Milwaukee Junction neighborhood, which is quickly becoming a hot spot for good restaurants. And this restaurant here named Freya, which is at the corner of Bobian and East Grand Boulevard, is already gaining national attention after only being open for just 11 months. Restaurant owner Sandy Levine and his business partner Doug Hewitt know a thing or two about opening a restaurant. They opened Chartreuse in Midtown in 2015. Then after traveling the country, experiencing many different ways to dine, they decided to bring a forever changing five course prefix meal to Detroit. With this style of service uh, in, in many of the other cities uh, around the country, it's only accessible to people that can afford, you know, three or four hundred dollars a person, which is not something we wanted to do. The meal is $85 per person. We were both born and raised in the Detroit area, and we love the city, and we want to connect with the city, and so we want this to be accessible to everyone. Yeah, I think, well, first course, I kind of want to get people excited. Anything that I make usually has a little bit of spice in it. Chef Phoebe Zimmerman describes Freya's food as American with an emphasis on Michigan. A modern twist on, like, American food, but also, like, pulling from as much pulling from places in Michigan as much as possible because, you know, Michigan is the second, second largest agricultural producer in the country, only next to um, California. So maybe that's why a writer for the New York Times listed Freya in an article titled 50 Restaurants We Love Most in 2022, which quickly got the attention of our local foodies. Last night, our shift, you know, every table was you know, congratulating us and excited for us. So, you know, that element of community and everybody um, being so, so happy for us was, was really special. And to think it's only year one for this restaurant, kind of like the first course of what's to be an excellent meal. I want to get you excited, I think, about what's what's to come. Of course, when that article came out, the reservations for the weekends here at Freya booked up through November. So if you're looking to try this restaurant, there still are reservations open on the weekdays through October, but make sure you get them quick. Reporting in Detroit, I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. What exciting news. Thanks, Kim. By the way, a lot of the food at Freya also comes from Urban Farms right here in Detroit.